Welcome to episode 31 of the Movie Lighthouse, shining a light through the fog of film. I'm James. I am Laurie. And <laughs> I am Wyndham. Hello, guys. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Thank you, mate. Considering? I'm living in a weird kind of sci-fi movie. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, well, yeah we are gonna... and it's not the best sci-fi movie either, is it? We are going to have well, a corona-free zone here, guys. No talking of the virus except that little bit <coughs> from me at the start. Is that fair enough? Okay, yeah. so this is going to be a short podcast, yeah? <laughs> no. Uh... We have got films to trawl through, <sighs> information to seek. We've got to help out the nation or the internation because they, um, they're going to be clamouring for our advice on what to watch, I'm sure. I agree. Who wouldn't? You just need to look at our historical podcast range. I actually had somebody at work tell me they were very excited. They just found the podcast. And they were yeah. very excited by our choice of films. So, really? Yeah. This is somebody who had actually already seen. So she's about 15, 20 years younger than me. So she's in her mid-20s. Yeah. Uh, she had already seen the original Robocop. She had already seen Watership Down. Oh. And she has al- already seen One Cut of the Dead. And frankly, oh, well, I mean, I mean, okay. So the our podcast two... is bob on for her. Yeah, yeah, first two is kind of sort of meat, meat and gravy, but that last one, well done, girl, ten points, boom. It's like we are doing this podcast for specifically for her. <laughs> well, let's do that. Yeah. What's her yeah. name? Kira. Hello, Kira. Kira. Her name is? Kira. Like, as in Dark Crystal? As in Dark Crystal, yeah. Well, Kiora. Yeah. Not like that at all, really. Like the and, drink. And as in the orange drink. Just for me and my dog. Oh, can we play well. that, James? Adora, Kiora. Kiora? That's too orangey for crows. It's just for me and my dog. I'll be your dog. I'll be your dog. Adora. Made in the jungle, whatever it was. Made in the Congo. Okay. Umbongo, umbongo. They make it in the Congo. Speed with Kira and Umbongo. Have we got any mail? (laughs) No. Have you guys had anything? Have we not? No. I know what. No. I I didn't make any up this year, this week. (laughs) Thank God. Oh, Wyndham, thank you so much for last um, for your last podcast. It was it was well received. Was it? Good. I actually yeah. was listening to it when I went for a run this morning, and I think you two are funny fuckers. Ah, oh, we are. You made, you made me laugh while I was out in the uh, in the Croydon countryside, <laughs> running on your cream. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get on with it then, shall we? Um, so let's have a bit of news. How's it going? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what the shit was that? I had a little frog in my throat. Okay, oh, well, right, okay. I can't talk about what... I've, I've got two pieces of news. So, One you want... of them is the coronavirus, and I said I'm not going to talk about that, so I'm crossing that off the list. Right. Fair enough. Uh, I've got a small piece of news. It's not really news. Um, everything has stopped, but... Batwoman is coming to TV yes. in, in that follow one from Gotham, which I think on the last podcast oh, right. we were saying DC have done really well on their TV stuff. And actually now they're moving their Gotham series into Batwoman, which actually, I've seen the trailers, looks pretty good. Cool. Well, you really liked Gotham, didn't you, James? I did like Gotham. Um, so, but I don't know if I can handle another one because Pennyworth has already also started, hasn't it? Which is... Uh, which is a story about the young Alfred Pennyworth. And I watched like the first right. 20 minutes and I just thought, what am I doing? What were you doing? You, you were watching, watching the Pennyworth. young Pennyworth. Yeah, so I stopped watching it. Was it any good? Well, it was... A, this is tracking his time through the army and stuff like that. 
It doesn't sound like it. If he's questioning his existence yeah, whilst I just, watching it. I just thought, well, you know, what do I like Batman about? I like Batman because of the villains, really. And if I'm really honest, I like the villains from the 60s TV show. My favourite my favorite <laughs> being King Tut. Oh, it was King Tut. Who used to bang his head and then turn into, like, the Egyptian king. Or Pharaoh, I suppose. And then at the end of the episode, bang his head again. I never saw King Tut. He was a big fat guy. And, um, yeah, at the end of every episode, he used to bang his head again and he just turned Who back into a librarian or something. Mm-hmm. Who did Vincent Price play? Vincent Price was in there a couple of times. I'm sure he was. Yes. Uh, Cesar Romero, Eartha Kitt. Oh, man, well, it's really people, such a beautiful play, thing. people played Catwoman, didn't they, I think? Uh, yeah, there was a... Prof- oh, what's her name? She was just gorgeous. Oh. Can't remember, but I love her. She meant a lot to me. Well, there's not Eartha Kitt, though. Even though she's amazing, Eartha Kitt is amazing. But there was another one. So Vincent, anyway. Price, Vincent Price played Egghead in um, Batman. Egghead! Yeah. Yes, that's it. And I might as well tell you we played oh, my, my knowledge of the 60s Batman is very limited. I used to, you know, I used to, I used to watch it all the time. I was mad. Not in the 60s, obviously. And it's probably... And it is... I know you don't want to mention it, but we are... a adhering to the isolation principles around the current global fuckery. Exactly. So we are We're all in the lighthouse. On. We're in your room. You're in your room. James is in his room and I'm stuck upstairs looking after the light. <laughs> it's fine. It's just the way the cookie crumbles, Laurie. It was unfortunate when lockdown happened, you happened to be in the library. We've got to Fuck bags. That I've eaten <laughs> Alan, by the way. You know that crocheting seagull? <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> Okay, so just to finish off... I've still off got off, his butt left, though. His butt still is. <laughs> just to finish off on our Batman, uh, Batman stuff, uh, the three women in Oh, do you have to? Catwoman were Julie Newmar, Lee Merriweather, and Eartha Kitt. I think it might be Lee Merriweather. Anyway, I love one of them. Mm. All right, Laurie, have you got any news? To fit. Um, probably. Um, no... Let me have a quick look. I might have written something down. Um, did I write anything down? No, that's a pub quiz. Um, right. So um, news. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. 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 A um, couple of weeks ago, uh, maybe even last week actually, Stuart Gordon. So he's our boy, Reanimator, the director of Reanimator, yeah. director of From Beyond, Dagon. So he did a lot of H.P. Lovecraft. You know, pretty incredible um, filmic representation of April Lovecraft. He passed away at 72 years oh. of age. Oh, oh dear. Wow. Yeah. Of, of I'm going to say, natural causes. Is there any such thing as... Yeah. So Stuart Gordon, there we go. I'm, huh? I'm not convinced there is any such thing as natural causes anymore. Really? Is there a pause because you're trying to digest what I'm saying... <laughs> Or that you can't hear me. <laughs> I think we're trying to digest what you're saying. Oh, whatever. No such thing as natural causes. So I've, yeah. I've got, I've got another little it, question. It's for difficult you, really. to comment on that without calling. Well, um, as you may know, um, they're making they're currently in production of a massive blockbuster version of Stephen King's The Stand, featuring Whoopi Goldberg as Mother. Oh. Do you think they're going to do it? I and think it might so, be paused for a bit. I think so they might have the some... The uh... of the stand is most of the world dies due to Captain Tripp's this terrible disease. So it might be a little bit close to the bone now. Yeah. yeah. Tricky. But it, it will happen. Kind of... Yeah, it, it will. It just yeah. won't be when they expect it. It's just going to be a little bit delayed. Whoopi's going to be, gonna be yeah. more seasoned. A bit like our conversation. But it will be there. Yeah. yeah. Mm. All right, let's go in the beat then. Flip it up. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start us off. Um, so my in the beam is a short film um, called La Cabina, which is um, was made in 1972, Spanish film, 
um, directed by Antonio Merguiolo, starring Jose Luis Lopez Vasquez. Um, and I can't remember where I f- uh, fell upon this now, but it's only half an hour long. <laughs> what? <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can find it. Just tap it to the internet. Anyway, it's all about a man. It's about this phone box, telephone box, and a man goes to this telephone box uh, to make a call, and the door locks behind him, and he can't get out. And then everybody's trying to get him out, and you can't break through the door, and it's kind of a bit weird and a bit funny, and then it gets really dark. And that's all I'm going to say. So now, okay. I I saw this when I was uh, really young. They played it a couple of times, I think, on BBC Two, like late at night, and I loved it. It's so good, isn't it? It sort of starts off very kind of. It's almost. It's a little bit surreal, isn't it? Kind of like very, kind of that sort of Mediterranean kind of sea surreal kind of thing. But yeah, it starts out fairly normally but then it just gets weirder and weirder and weirder and weirder sorry there's an apparition one shall I I give you mine in a minute let's wait I'll have to edit this bit out alright okay ready you ready alright give us yours Uh, so I surprisingly, considering I'm just at home now, I haven't actually watched that many things. But I did finally get round to watching Brightburn. Oh, right, Have you guys yeah. seen Brightburn? Is it's like a modern what thing? happens if a... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's basically kind of based on what happens if Superman came to the planet but had bad intentions towards all of us. So, kid, spaceship crashes on the Earth. This couple who've been desperately trying to have a family for however long, it crashes outside their barn. They adopt the kid as their own, and then at the point he's probably starting to go through puberty, he starts developing his powers, and he's not quite as um, wholesome as, say, somebody like Superman was. But, yeah, it was all right. Oh, sounds good. It's, I think it's probably worth a watch. I think that they were hoping to set it up as a a kind of franchise type thing, which I'm not sure whether it's quite strong enough for that, but it was, um, yeah, it's worth a watch. Uh, uh, it's worth a watch. And there are a couple of nice set pieces, kind of more horror-based set pieces in it. Yeah, it's and what, all right. And what did you say you can see that on? I think it was on you Amazon. see it on the sky. It's on the sky. Oh, maybe it was on Sky. Okay. Yeah. On all, all reputable streaming services. Oh, yeah. which we all seem to have nowadays because we've got nothing else to do. So I, I saw, I've seen quite a few things. I'm only allowed to say one though, aren't I? But I will just quickly mention this. This might interest you guys. If you like a Who Done It, I love a Who Done It personally. But this little baby here, Murder by Death. All right, well, um, starring. Have wait that for it. Just audio still, by the way, listeners. Yeah, but starring Peter Falk, Peter Sellers, Alec Guinness, uh, uh, what's his name? Truman Capote. Oh, wow. uh, what's her name? Maggie Smith. Can't uh, <laughs> see e- cast. Everybody. David Niven. Everybody. Everyone. Everybody. What's it called again? Murder by Death. Okay. Yeah? Is it a comedy? And mm. it's, it's definitely... It, it is, and it's definitely inspired Clue. So or everyone in the right mind loves a bit of Clue. So yeah, hugely inspired that. Very, very funny. It also. Um, l- it also looks like uh, Peter Falk is playing Columbo. Yeah, but he's um, he's much funnier, <laughs> much much funnier. All right, thanks very uh, much. All right. Oh no 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 no. no, 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 no. <laughs> Love on the rocks Ain't no surprise Do you want to give us your on the rocks? For a change, I don't have an on the rocks this time. All right. Uh, I do. I do as well. Go on, uh, Laurie, you go first. Surprisingly, now this is a while ago, probably about three, four weeks ago, a Hitchcock movie came on. And I, you know, we thought, obviously, great Hitchcock. You've got Cary Grant in it. Fantastic. To Catch a Thief. Fantastic. Started watching it. 
It's clunky as hell, and it's really not very good. And it surprised me. To Catch a Thief, Hitchcock, 1955. No. Um, another one as well, Stormbreaker. Fucking awful. You did have to write you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to let you do your other in the beam, but I'll change my mind now. All right, I've oh, got another you... rock. <laughs> I've got another rock. I watched Terminator Dark Fate the other day. Oh, uh, Oh, is that the right. latest one done by Cameron with yeah. all the guys? Oh, okay. Okay, so if you if you don't want to know what happens in it, close your ears for a second. But, right, they did that cardinal sin that I really hate, that they did in Aliens and all that kind of stuff. They re- it, It's a direct follow-on from Terminator 2. And in the first five minutes, they kill John Connor. You know, he's yeah. still a lad. He's, he's at the bar and the Terminator comes and kills him. And it's like, oh, well, what was the point of Terminator 2? <laughs> and one. Yeah. And one. Yeah. <laughs> and then it, it just slowly deteriorates into the most cringeworthy uh, bit uh, bit of film. And then and then just to top it all off, you know, halfway through, obviously, Schwarzenegger's back. And he's just appalling, you know. It's just, it's awful. Is it a mm. cock? Is it a sack of fuck? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> All right, well... well that's disappointing, isn't it? It's a sh- I, it pisses me off when they do that. They kind of... You've got these... I make, so they've just had all, all the Alien films on on TV, so Prometheus and Covenant and stuff like that. And, it's when, and those have their qualities. But yeah. It's that whole kind of trying to just... They made these amazing films in the 70s of Alien and Terminator, and it's like, shit, we cannot recapture that lightning because those films are just... They broke the ground, and now it's like, well... Yeah. Just make it bigger and more explosive and a bit... Just fuck it, it doesn't have to make sense. It's, it's, it's so reason, frustrating. The reason why they did the Terminator one, this Terminator one is for money, and I'm sure they made plenty of money. But, the pro- well, but the what problem, you say... What... The problem with it is as well, is it is almost like a remake of Terminator 2. You know, you've got, right. you've got the... You've got the big chase scene with instead of an articulated truck, I think it's like a JCB or something. I don't know, but it's it's virtually so, it's so slower, it's slower chase scene. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, yeah. I'm not good with vehicles, so I don't think it was one of those. <laughs> yeah. But it was big. Um, but yeah, it was just it was just a waste of time, really. So that was a shame. Hmm. I All think right. what's important to say though, it sounds like that that Terminator sounds proper wank. But with the alien stuff, at least with Prometheus and Covenant. They're, they are definitely trying to do something with it. I, I, I feel I need to go back to them and try and, try and give them more time. But they're, like they're definitely Prometheus. trying to do something. Yeah, I thought Prometheus was quite nice. I quite liked it as a visual kind of thing. Yeah. But, yeah, it was, I, I, I agree. I, I kind of dipped into both of them just very briefly while they were on, but and for some reason didn't manage to stick with them. But I agree. I, I yeah. think they're worth going back and giving another crack to. Yeah. All right, so should we get on with our feature presentation? Yeah. The year 2000. Let's all meet up. Okay. <laughs> So, just before we start that, I just want to talk a little bit about the ones that got away. So, we have Pitch Black, which was a Vin Diesel um, um, thing, wasn't it? Where we had Silver it was, yeah. Yeah, it was Vin Diesel. Yeah. yeah, you know it was me, James. <laughs> <laughs> As you had Double Bubble. Uh-huh. Um, I, wanted to, I, I still really like it. This was on TV recently as well, and it's just, it, it's Vin Diesel before he became the bell end Vin Diesel has become. Or the, the <laughs> myth around whatever it is, and it, I just think it's a it's a really enjoyable sci-fi slash scary jumpy film. I, 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 so I, I thought it was worth it, but whatever. You're right. No, 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 no. You're right, and I should have chosen it. And the only reason why I chose the beach is because I really can't stand it, and I've got one, some weird one, flagellation. All right, and the other one that you chose um, that unfortunately was Hollow Man. Was Hollow Man? Yeah, not a chance. Yeah, the, the reason I picked that was because um, the episode had gone on for so long. It was just the first film I saw. So let's <laughs> just pick a film, get out of the room. <laughs> this has been the longest podcast we've ever done. Let's just crack on. 
All right, well, let me give you a little bit of information about um, the year 2000. All right, so in the news, Harold Shipman was exposed for killing off um, a load of pensioners. <sighs> so he was like the, the early version of the coronavirus, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, in popular culture, uh, the Millennium Dome opened, soon to be rebranded oh, yeah. the O2. Did anyone Did go, you go to it? it? Yeah, it was Do rubbish. I do I remember this wrong? But when they first opened it up, they had like the whole body, whatever, and you used to go up an escalator yeah. into a fanny. Into the colon. Oh. I thought it was into the fanny. I don't think you went in through the vagina. A no. massive fanny. No. They missed but the there were pubic lice in there. There, there, were, there was pubic lice in there. That was the thing that everyone was talking about. All that bloody money, and that's all they got. <laughs> it, it was it's, such a crock of... I... People coming down from the ceiling in sheets. Yeah, it was super rubbish. I was working for a, a, a globally well-known credit card company at the time. And just before Christmas, um, the company wanted to do a Christmas do. And we were sent to recce the Millennium Dome as a potential venue. And we just came back going, it's utter poke. So we just went to the pub instead. Well, there you go. Anyway, on TV, um, uh, we had Big Brother for the first time. Um, and... uh, I did we? Yeah, the weakest link was at the height of his powers as well, and that started too. Oh, yeah. Um, and music, Coldplay released their debut album. Oh! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I Big quite, fan there, Lauren. You know what? I quite like their song, Yellow, their first song. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and people who died in the year 2000, Alec Guinness. Oh, no. um, oh. John Gilgood. Oh. oh, and Paula Yates. Oh, oh. yeah. And top That's five, top five grossing films. Uh, we had Meet the Parents, Mission Impossible Two, Perfect Storm, X Men, and at the top was Gladiator, featuring okay, featuring a posthumous appearance by whom? Oliver Reed. Oliver Reed. Yeah, they sellotaped his head on in some bits, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, they certainly did. <laughs> All right, let's make a start. So the that does not we... sound like a great top five, can I just say, for 2000. That evidently wasn't a super great year for box office. No, but I think the two films that I chose were quite good. <laughs> let's have a look at that, shall we? So, box uh... office always drinks cum anyway, so <laughs> don't worry about that. All right, so <laughs> film number one is going to be Battle Royale. Um... Let's uh, let me tell you a bit about Battle Royale. It was released in 2000, obviously. Director Kinju Fakusoku. Screenplay Kenji Sukanaka. Kenta Fakusoku. <laughs> novel Kushin Takami. Music Masash Mishi Amano. It had a budget of 4.5 million and it got a box office return of 30 million worldwide. It gets 87% on Rotten Tomatoes. It had one sequel, uh, Battle Royale 2. And I am not going to embarrass myself by reading through the list of actors because it's just going to be cringeworthy. So let's have a clip. <laughs> So, Laurie, do you want to give us a synopsis? Oh, it's kind of it's kind of future Japan, even though it feels very present, even now, even though it was made like 20 years ago. Anyway, so kind of future Japan, and there's this thing that's come out from the government where they basically, there's an act called the Battle Royale Act where they take delinquent students onto an island and make them all kill each other. Pretty good. Pretty good. And it was, um, it was obviously the precursor to things like the Hunger Games. Yeah. Completely ripped it off. 
But um, it did come later than the running man, so we have to give all the credit to the running man, I reckon. <laughs> well, no, yeah. There's, however, this... Oh, God, Battle Royale is so good. This, this, this is... It, Cuts through like a bitch. It, it's yeah. This is it's this is punky, like it's, it's meaningful and it's just cool. All right. So yeah, Wonder, but have you ever seen it before? Uh, I have. Yeah, but not particularly um, long ago. So I think I probably saw it for the first time five, five, six years ago. Okay. Yeah, and I, I saw it, it. It is a hell of a watch. Oh, I love this film. I absolutely adore it. I, t- I saw it for the first time probably about fifteen years ago. I've got a feeling it might have been with you as well, Lloyd. But um, yep. I adore every bit of this film. I love the... the. I've got it here. It's a deliciously violent film. You know, it's... Yeah. You know. Uh, Laurie, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I just loved it. I can't remember what how it popped on my radar. Um, I can't remember for the life of me. I was interested in Japanese cinema, and it, I suppose it just naturally came out, really. But, yeah, it's just... It, right from the opening, really, just the brutality of it just shook me. And obviously, you know, we have seen that kind of concept before with The Running Man, which I always loved. And I don't think The Running Man uh, kind of lived up to that, how good that idea could be. And this is uh, this. They just nail it, like from the scene on the bus where they all get gassed and they wake up in that room. And then they just get, you know, it slowly it comes out. They're explaining the rules to them, that bizarre kind of, really happy hey and yeah, yeah. Listen, we're all playing the game and they've all got their like bracelets around their neck uh necklaces around the neck sorry um just that whole scene is like oh my god this is gorgeous and it just yeah it just escalates from there and all the characters so quickly so efficiently you kind of get a connection to all the different characters even though they've probably got a real short snippet of their time but bizarrely they just managed to nail all of that and um yeah i just loved it yeah, and still do. The, it's a it's a big ensemble cast, and right away, I mean, obviously there was, there's about five or six people that you're really kind of focused on, but you feel like you know all the all of them a little bit, and I think it's really nice the way that they use flashbacks as well to establish more the story of the characters going through it, but it doesn't wallow in that. It you know it's so quick. It's, yeah, I mean it's it's interesting because the it, it's. The fundamental premise is there's been a breakdown in respect between the younger generations and the older generations. And in Japan, obviously, it's a very respect driven culture. So they pass this Millennial Education Reform Act, as you say, Laurie, Battle Royale Act. And it's just it, it's it's kind of triggered by the fact that a kid in school ends up stabbing, knifing one of the teachers. And then that year, essentially, get thrown onto this island single survivor takes all type thing. Um, and it's good. And you, to your point, Laurie, not only do you kind of get a really quick snippet, but they they end up, uh, normally you'd have a progression of from normality through desperation to whether or not they were going to be a murderous psychopath or um, looking to hide or do something else. But in this, really quickly, it's really economic. It's because that, go, yeah. This is how you're going to be immediately. So you kind of walk yeah. out and there are, two people who've already hung themselves within 10 yeah. seconds and then there's so a fat kid with a crossbow. Yeah. And it's that's, really, the, that's it's the question. That, that's it. That's the question they've been given. It's like, right, okay, what are you going to do? You're going to be like a team player? You're going to try and get together? Or are you like, that's it, you lot are fucking dead. I'm going to kill you or suicide or whatever. Really, really cool. I just, um, you mentioned, it, 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 it's, I still can't quite figure it out, but there's obviously, you see a previous year where the winner of the Battle Royale, uh, Battle Royale Act has won, and she's now free. Remember that? So yeah. it's kind of like this is year two or year three or whatever. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or, because of the two guys as well. You know, the two guys when they're in the room, these ominous characters sat at the back of the room. Um, they they were previous uh, Yeah, and Ka- winners, Kawada, yeah, yeah. Kawada won it three years before uh, this version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When did you last watch it, Laurie? Uh, it's a while ago. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. You've, You're you've... just trying to remember the film as we talk about it. <laughs> Gosh. Um, could you guys participate? 
could we participate? Would you do it? Oh, you didn't get a choice, though, do you? No, yeah, so you what would you... Yeah, what, you're what, thrown would, in. what would you do? What would the base reaction be? I'd, I'd look after you guys. <sighs> yeah, you would... I think you'd, you'd break into tribes first, wouldn't you? Which is essentially what they do. And then you kind of go, OK, well, I'll... The four of us will run around. The three of them will run around. The three, th- five women go to the lighthouse and essentially set up a domesticated life together. Oh, which is that's quite nice. such a good scene. Yeah. That is such a cool scene. Until but- it all falls apart. Because fundamentally, whatever the kind of links and the yeah. s- decisions they've made, it's like, no, 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 no. Everybody the knows. There's, yeah, there's one survivor coming out of this. So at some point, yeah, yeah. you're going to have to throw down. Because, yeah, you've got that scene, because basically, correct me if I remember this wrongly, but um, there's the quiet one kind of in the background. She's poisoned the soup or something. Yeah. And then the yeah. guy, um, she doesn't want the guy to die or something. She stops yeah, him. And then him. because I of mean, that. They, they mix together the, like, school school kid stuff. Like, oh, he really likes you. Now I'm going to shoot yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And stuff yeah. like that. Brilliantly. And that's, but that's what it would exactly what it would be. You know, you put teenagers in there. That's, that's, that, that shit would be going down. That's and it's, it's because you've got that, you've got the guy who um, evidently fancies the, the female lead and has done for years and years and years, but she's not interested. And he corners her and then basically kind of goes, we know we're going to die anyway. We should shag. And it's just that kind of. <laughs> teenage thinking yeah. like, listen, seriously I really want to get laid before I go Why well, we should what, what possible reasons do you have not to do it uh, but she I think she knifes him in the crotch yeah, yeah she, she certainly does, does. So she, she's yeah, very she's, not, she's, she's very, not into very it. patient with him she's very patient yeah. with him she is he accidentally cuts her thingy and then boom you she loses her, her mind the other thing she is awesome this, because it's it's obviously it's based on a comic isn't it Based on a, a it's thing. no, it's originally based on a book, right? Uh, and then subsequently, yeah, they made a manga okay. of it. Although it's, it's you know, it's very dark, it's very light as well, and so it's not horrific, although it's got lots of horrific elements in it. You know, I mean, the, the deaths are inspired and very cleverly shot and stuff like that, but um, I mean, you could pull out so many different scenes, like. You know the explanation video at the start. You know they put the film on uh, with the weather. The girl is a bit like a weather girl. The kind of cute scene. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. 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 It's just. Yeah, I just love everything about this film. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She's very cutesy in the way she kind of goes. She explains the collars. Yes. And it's kind of like, hey, if you if you if you do whatever. Uh, um, is it a distant? Oh, they because they shrink the island as well, don't they? They they no, have zones. They got chop zones, up in zones, so, zones, so you have if you're in the zone, zone at a certain time. At a specific yeah. time. If you're not, you, yeah, yeah, your yeah. necklace blows up. But Kitano, so the, the 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 teacher that seems to be running the whole kind of this year's battle royale. Yeah. I suppose that that's how it works actually. So you become if you're the teacher that wants to, you know fuck up the, the, the class that you're angry with or the kids that you're angry with, you become kind of the runner of that season. Yeah, I but he did has have a, a problem with that. I thought that was a bit hokey, but um, but you can make sense of it. And yeah, it, he's a great that actor, that guy. The, for the extra level for, um, of mm. him talk. Come on, guys, don't be so sad. I hope you get a good night's sleep. Yeah, yeah and, all, and when, it, when it all starts and you've got these 40 people in a room, and the kid who stabbed him is in there, and just to drive home the fact that this is real, he shoots him. And it's just, holy shit! Yeah, yeah, Fuck. yeah, yeah. So that's, 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 goes, that's Oops, an I'm not allowed to kill the kill the kids. So, yeah. So I may be wrong, but I'm pretty confident that that guy's called Beat Takashi. Really, really good actor. He did Violent Cop, Boiling Point, Sonatine. Um, but he's, know, he's a cracker. We, we do know we can see you reading this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I forgot the name of the film, <laughs> yeah. so I had to just quickly check. Lucky I've got him up he's here, a, isn't it? Yeah, he's Beto Takeshi in the film, and he's Takeshi Kitano as a, a an actor. Yeah, right, right. Can we can we talk a little bit about the music? So they, um, a bit like uh, Clockwork Orange, they use loads of classical music, don't they? Yeah, do they use the Blue yeah. Danube at some point? Don't think so. Don't know. But but I think I think the music is kind of like another character in this because right from oh. the start when you've got the waves crashing on the beach and you've got the opening, brum, dum, brum, dum, you know whatever it is, 
um, it, it's just very powerful and it gets you straight in there uh, right away. Yeah, yeah. I think but when I think, they, they think... the morning Sorry, death Laurie. reports, when they run the basically over the tannoys, they run the reports of who's died. Again, again, another great thing when someone dies in this film, you see at the bottom death number one. Yeah. whatever their name is and what they died of and how many are left. But in the morning, you get, yeah, you get the blue Danube over the Tannoy and then they, they say who died. And it's interesting because obviously the, the Hunger Games is a, is a direct rip-off. Yeah. yeah. But in, in, in this, you're then looking at a room full of 40 people and the expectation is that at most you're going to see half of them die because there's a lot of people to kill off. And if you remember the Hunger Games and you just kind of have... Randomly, people end up dying, and you have to assume that they've killed each other at a different part of the in the playing area. But this essentially covers every single one of them. Yeah. The only one, the only people you don't see die are the suicides. Yeah, and, yeah and, I think. But uh, but you see you see them in either flashback, don't you? Or you know, don't um, you see them hanging, don't you? I guess. You see them hanging. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can we talk a little bit about the effect? Because um, obviously this doesn't rely, well, not obviously, but it doesn't rely at all on CGI. It's all like practical effects and all for the better, I think. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you've got, I mean, the use of blood, um, the Japanese seem to do it better than anybody else, don't they, really? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is so, like you say, there's nothing particularly fandangled about it. It is a bunch of kids running around with sharp projectile based weapons or whatever and the impact or a pot lid you got like a saucepan lid because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you don't know what you're going to get because everyone gets a different pack when they run out yeah and some right. people have got like binoculars or a saucepan lid or a, a uzi nine millimeter you never know <laughs> yeah. it, it, awesome it's idea concept. um has anyone seen the sequel no. yeah it's yeah 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 so it's very much about it's very much about that that hacking into the battle royale. Is it really? They try yes. Yes. But it doesn't really yeah. work. I don't think. And I don't no, think we recreate this sort of thing. You know, this is a one-off kind of opportunity. It's like there's nothing quite like it. Yeah. Um, all right. And Although what... lots of people have tried to, there've been lots of films where groups of individuals have ended up. It's lots of sci-fi films, basically, and you kind of take people from wherever they are and drop them in a in a game area. And I... But it, you're right, it, it isn't the same and it doesn't, they never work quite to the same degree that this one does. And I suppose we can't really... Laurie, will you stop doing that? <laughs> what are you doing? Do you, know, do you know what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to, when I'm not talking, charge my phone up because it's just flashed up and my All phone's right, well, about listen, to we're die. Gonna, we're going to have a 10 minute break in a minute when we finish this and then you can charge it and blast it for a bit. Because uh, I okay. can't feed my dog. Um, all right, so... Memorable scenes, I've, I've put here, I mean, I think there's loads of set pieces, but the fight between the girl psycho and the guy psycho. You know, awesome. Just, oh, yeah. He's, he's brilliant. You know, he's but, brilliant. Uh, my, I agree, yeah. That's good. But I think my favourite scene is when the with the girls in the lighthouse, their relationships deteriorate, because that's that's kind of like almost Tarantino-esque in the way that scene just yeah. Yeah. escalates and... Yeah. There's five or six of them, and somehow the choreography means that they all get killed. And it's, yeah, yeah. it's just a brilliant, brilliant scene. Tarantino said, blatantly said, this this is the film that he wished he he, he could make. He says, it's, yeah, he, he's a completely in love with this film. It's one of his best films of all time. And you can clearly see, can't you? So, yeah. look, now we're in today's society, and we've got, you know, access to very easy access to subtitles and things. Do you think they should be remaking films like this? I mean, I know they haven't specifically remade Battle Royale, but I've got a feeling they are at the moment. But, um, you know... And no, obviously what do you mean just, we, well, English just language seen, versions? Well, we've just seen, you know, or we have seen Parasite, you know, and I think that was all the better for its original language. Do you think we should Hollywood should be taking these films and remaking them? Or... Of course not. No, 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 no. We've we've just seen it, right? And we can see it's still relevant today. It's just transcended twenty years. It's still proper, proper, brutal, good, relevant, and just excellent. So absolutely, there's no no need to remake this whatsoever. And, and with and regards to when, a scene, with regards to a scene, though, I do want to flag that I love the bit where the big the big fat guy that's got the crossbow. 
when they all start oh, coming out, yeah. he he chomp is chomped someone in the neck. They, this person walks past with an arrow, and all of a sudden you realise, okay, we're on, we're on. And just yeah. that really awkward bit where he loses his crossbow, and the guy picks it up and gives it back to him. Well, he's going to give it back to him, but then he sees, wait that. a minute, this guy's actually gone shit back shit crazy. <laughs> yeah. So he kills it. It's just like that scene is just like, ah, oh, it's just so good. Well, that's it. I think yeah. you can go shot by shot by shot. Like even the I love the yeah. bit where the girl, um, the the jogger, where she's running, and yes, she's, and she's she, remembering. And, and yeah, she turns the corner. I always run with you, and then she's in the same tracksuit, but she's suddenly running on the island. I thought, oh, that's lovely, you know, just... Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. When you were yeah. going to say something. Yeah, I was just going to say, on, on the Hollywood remake stuff, in, undoubtedly they will, because it's such a great film, but it will lose all of the beautiful nuance and the Japanese-ness. And that is what... Through, through this, through the movie Lighthouse, I have realised I absolutely love... Japanese films, yeah, yeah. Or, and, and Parasite obviously is a, is a Korean film, but they're just, they, they've already they're remade just a it. thing of their own. They're, they're beautiful America has already remade it. It's the Hunger Games. They've already remade it. Yeah, no, they've yeah, made a version of it. But if, but if, even surprised. if they were to do shot by shot remake, it would be so much shitter because <laughs> yeah. it would just lose all of that just Japanese otherliness. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to run out of batteries. Yeah, I mean, there was rumours that they were going to remake it, but I don't think they are. All right, well, let's quickly score it, and then we'll take a break, yeah? So, yeah. performances. Laurie? Uh, nine. Wind? Six. And seven from me. Effects, Wyndham? Seven. Eight? Eight. Plot, nine from me. Laurie? Uh, 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 ten. Ooh, eight. Uh, rewatch factor, uh, Laurie. Uh, nine. Five. Nine for me. Direction, win. Six. Nine for me. Uh, nine. Cinematography, uh, seven. 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 Um, sound and music, Laurie. Uh, eight. Seven. Seven for me. Originality, win. Nine. Nine for me. Because uh, you did say The Running Man, didn't you? Oh, 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 nine. And enjoyability, ten for me. Oh, that's not the last one. <laughs> nine. Eight. And life-changing, Wyndham. Zero. Eight. Seven. All right, so that gives... My total of 83. Punchy. I've given it 63. Yeah. Two. <laughs> what what amazes me with this is he's been at home on lockdown. All this time he's still been watching the bloody film. I oh, know, it's shocking, isn't it? It's almost like he's got something else to do. Exactly. Like look after yeah. kids or something. <laughs> I was eating seagull for God's sakes. Right, 85. <laughs> 85. What's that? Given? 85 gives us uh, a grand total of 231 and a movie lighthouse rating of 77. What? Is that all? 77. So I that's can... pretty good. I'm giving our lead boy. I think that's pretty good. All right, so 77. I can say, right, on our 2020 leaderboard. That puts it in second place, just below One Cut of the Dead. Um, right. And it's overall, better than One Cut of the Dead. Overall, Japanese it top, the top the 10, which is great news. Um, it is just below Candyman and just above Silence of the Lambs. Wow. Cool. That's pretty good. Pretty punchy. Yeah. Which pretty punchy, babes. We have knocked off the Dark Crystal and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from our overall top 10. Well, we've had a good run. All it's right. sad to see him go. So, uh... The next film is going to be The Beach. So, let me give you a little bit of information about The Beach. All right, again, released in 2000, years 2000. It was, the director was Danny Boyle. It was written by Alex Garland. Uh, music, Angelo Badalamenti, John Cale and Brian Eno. 
Uh, budget, 50 million. It made... Anyone want to guess how much it made worldwide? Made me sick. Ah! 300 million. 144 million. Uh, it got 20% on Rotten Tomatoes. No sequels or spin-offs. And it had Leonardo DiCaprio as Richard, Tilda Swinton as Sal, and... Um, let's say Robert Carlyle as Daffy. All right, so mm-hmm. let's have a clip. Oh, yeah. He was looking for something new, a way to change his life. Hey, you want to go? You need somewhere to stay? No, thanks. You afraid of something new? I guess there's this urban myth going around here at the moment. It's about a beach. A secret beach. On an island that no one can get to. Somewhere, paradise must exist. I just feel like everyone tries to do something different, but they always wind up doing the same damn thing. Okay, so the beach. Um, Laurie, do you want to give us a synopsis? Uh, There's a twat in Thailand, and he's uh, looking for twat things to do to enrich... The experience, his life. So he drinks like some snake's blood. He's not even alcoholic. He's a twat. And um, he bumps into this guy that says, oh, there's this amazing island experience that's really secret, man. And then he's kind of mental and that dude kills himself, but he leaves the twat a map and he follows he follows the map, which is actually a good part of the film, actually. I quite like that bit. And he gets to the island... And he meets some more twats, and they do like twat stuff together, and then he get goes a bit mental. So, so you're a fan of this film, then, Laurie? Uh, yeah, very much so. <laughs> do you know it's a bit, it's a, it's a bit <laughs> sad, really, because whenever I watch this film, I just he reminds us, Richard, the character reminds me of you, Laurie, completely. What? Yeah, <laughs> I've fallen on my own sword. Yeah, because you went, uh, you went to Thailand um, for a year. You did on your own little adventure. You yeah, looked, exploring what uh, life uh, could offer. I went, I went to go out there to be with the love of my life. All right, and she will attest to this. For the first sort of two months, actually, I was a massive twat. You're absolutely right. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> For the first two months, I was grumbling, saying, I'm not a hippie. What am I doing in Thailand? <laughs> Found it was the most fantastic, life-changing experience of my life. I realised there's no need to keep acting a twat. So, or it's, or it's all right to be a twat. I don't know what I'm trying to get at, but I found an epiphany out there, and it changed me forever. Just so, yeah, like you're absolutely right, James. Very beach. astute. So that's why I hate this film so much. <laughs> Lauren, uh, with them, uh, your first memories, when did you watch it? So my first uh, watching of this was a couple of weeks ago in preparation for this podcast. Really? I've never seen it before. Yeah. And... I've got to say, because this came out, I think we were uh, living in Wimbledon at the time. Um, I remember reading the book. Everyone was reading the book. We watched the film. Read the the book. Book. Yeah, I read, I read the book. Yeah, yeah. All Saints were singing um... a little ditty about it. It seemed <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just... the music in this film. The music in this film, and fucking it, we'll hell. Get, well, we'll get Twist my dick. But it reminded me as well. Do you know what? I'll, I'll t- I, I went and did Cap America a couple of years before that. And it was that whole kind of spirit of adventure, travelling and stuff. I've got a lot of affection for this film. I just, You're a so bigger the, man the, than me, Sam. The, the, the kind of, it's not really a problem I have with it, but it, it, it just, it's just a... I, at the end of it, I kind of went, it's just a film. You know? and, mm. and I, I think I, I rarely come out of the films that we pick thinking it's just a film. They're either yeah. brilliant or they're super shit or they're really weird or they're whatever. This, this is just a film. It didn't touch yeah. me in any way. It, and the performances are fine. It, it, yeah, whatever. I'm I so he, sorry. It, basically, yeah. basically, I let my self-flagellation come into the quality of our content. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry, but I just had to flagellate. I must have felt guilty that day, or I don't know what the hell it was. But, yeah, I knew I didn't like this film, right, well, and I picked it for some dickhead reason. Let's try and start with the positives, if there is any. All right. Okay, I, yeah. I think, I think it tells an original story. Um, 
it, you know, it, it, there's nothing else quite like it, really, or there certainly wasn't anything like it when it came out. Um, you know, and it captured kind of a zeitgeist of the nation, I reckon. Yeah, yeah in a way. I, I mean, there's, there is that, there is that gap yard kind of ethos that you take a year out, you travel to Thailand or wherever, and you find yourself, have adventures, do things you would never do normally. <laughs> and this is ex- in, encapsulates that. Um, and the idea of going <laughs> to this random you? island. It's because I never realised this. I never realised this. this you live at the beach. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and uh, it's, so the, the, the kind of the premise is that this beach island is um, it's actually used by drug growers, massive marijuana farm there, uh, and as a result, I like, I like the way all you're these people drug pitching up. Growers. Sorry, I, I think that's great. <laughs> what, what do you call them? Drug growers. What do know. you call them? I suppose, yeah. They do, they're growing the drugs, right? Farmers, there you go. Um, and the, all these people have pitched up the island, and the the drug lords, or the farmers, have basically said, OK, you can stay and build your little community, but no more people are allowed to come, otherwise we're going to lose our shit and get very angry with you. And at that point, Daffy, played by Robert Carlyle, loses his mind, goes to Bangkok bumps into Leonardo DiCaprio, gives him a map. And then he makes a copy of that map, leaves it for somebody else, and lo and behold, it all falls to shit. But I, I, it was just, meh. It's just meh. Yeah, yeah, it's it just, uh, meh is actually a word that I use quite a lot in my review here, or my notes, should I say. I think as well, what the, one of the problems is, is that the people involved in this film all kind of believe their own hype a bit. Like Danny Boyle is yeah. a big victim of this. You know, yes. really believe in the hype of. You know, Transport was a great film, but um, uh, with Leonardo, a great soundtrack. Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, acting his socks off, but in a kind of smug way. And the same with Carlisle. Yes. It's just a bit. I'll oh, get over it now. Yeah. Yes. So yes, yeah, Carlisle's yes, yes. playing the Carlisle's playing the Bampot from. A, a different kind of Glaswegian nutter that he did from Train Spotting, and yeah, it's a good point actually. And actually, I'm I'm actually quite a fan of Leonardo DiCaprio. I think he's almost never bad. And before he was this, was annoying thought, in this, though, he's, right? He's not bad in this, but he. It, I just think the whole thing is a bit meh. Yeah. And as when he result, goes when he, he goes mental meh. at the end and he starts sneaking into the the, the drug growers' den where they're asleep and he puts a bandana on and stuff like that. Didn't, didn't you find him really irritating? Yeah. yeah I, and it was such an acceleration. From yeah. Relative normal to and that, fucking crackers. And that, that like, gaming I bit. Yeah. I love that gaming bit I, as well. It's no, like, it's so yeah. badly done. But, he's like, yeah, I mean, that's really aged stupid aged faces. Awfully. Yeah. That, that's aged really badly. Really and badly. I, and the I, soundtrack, I like Moby and, Fucking all saints, and it's like, oh fuck, right off. What, a, what about <laughs> Tilda Swinton? She never gives a bad performance. She's actually been known to annoy me previously sometimes, but in this, you actually think she does actually she's quite well. Yeah, she's like that. She <laughs> is like that. I thought she was all right yeah, in this. I, I quite liked her in this. But, yeah, she's quite good. Yeah, but again, I, I just the whole kind. I mean, I, I appreciate that. I've not spent a year in Thailand. I presume you did bump into some of these people, Laurie, once you decided you didn't have to be one of them anymore. Mm, yeah. I think so I guess yeah, they, are, they are out there. Look, the other problem I think with this film is I think it wants to be something like Apocalypse Now and really profound. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, well and, and when he starts going crackers... Yeah. Uh, and he's he's going in. I was, I was kind of put very briefly in mind of Deer Hunter and stuff like that. And you kind of go, but he had a very genuine kind of descent into crazy because of what he'd been through. You've spent three and a half weeks on a luxury, on a beautiful island. Yeah. And it's somebody's had their leg bitten off. That's it. It's basically that she found out, Tilda found out that he was to blame because these dudes, these surfer dudes have got the map and they're coming to the island. So that's going to put him in deep shit with the the drug growers, so he's got to stay up the hill 
And the moment they come on land, Tilda says you've got to get that map off them. And then that's when he goes into the video game and goes batshit crazy. But I did say I did say earlier though, I, I quite like the bit when they're getting to the island. That I kind of like that whole kind of sequence of them. Their so him and the two French. Steps. Yeah. Albeit, I don't yeah, love a love. Right. I don't like a love triangle. Love triangles piss me off. So that bit pissed me off. But um, the the travel we're getting there was quite good. Okay. And to be fair, if, if you were swimming from one island to another, which is what they were doing, yeah. and yeah. one of the people you were swimming with <laughs> yeah. dove down and pretended to be eaten by a shark, you'd punch yeah. him in the face, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Not funny. Um, Sorry, but you utter the prick. What a rush. What a rush. Can we talk a little bit about the music? So, um, oh. was, did you not like any of it? I hated it. Absolutely. So it you see how sound, you've got it's Moby. A, it's a guy from Twin love. Peaks. I know, I know, I know. But he's probably doing the incidental stuff. But the yeah, stuff I'm was. talking about is Moby, Uncle, Blur, All Saints. It's just shit. You like Blur, don't you? I do like Blur, but not like, not not in here. The film's trying to be cool. Like you nailed it, James. When you said it believed in its own high pit. It's trying to be whoa, and it's just it's not whoa. <laughs> Do you know what? No, the, other, the other thing I've got, and it, it is a bit cornflake because I haven't really written very much about it. It's not. It's very superficial. It's what you see is what you get in it. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I've made no notes on this film at all. Great. So let's kind of let's score it. it. Well, let's score it. And I'm just really sorry I picked just, it. Just to say as well, I mean, it didn't do itself any favours to production, did it? Because. It had lots of reports that they've trashed the island where they went and filmed this, apparently. The beautiful beach. They fucked it up. Yeah, so... so. Yeah, I, I mean, there's, there's... We are kind of skimming over it because it didn't make a big impression on us, evidently. Because there is, as you say, the love triangle and the French woman leaves her boyfriend but for it's Leo. Kind of and dramatic. I've got here, like, it, memorable <laughs> scenes. Nothing stands out. Does it stand up to that? <laughs> Not really. It's dull. <laughs> you know, no and you're right, that no video game lines. sequence is what? No. In fact, the only the only memorable line, and bearing in mind I made no notes, so this is the only one I remember, is when periodically they have to do a supplies run back to Bangkok, and Tilda Swinton tells Leonardo DiCaprio, R Richard or Robert, whatever his name is, he's going to come with her, and they end up shagging, uh, and he's a bit worried, so you oh, you know. She's got a boyfriend on the island, and she put, puts him straight and says, whatever his name, Brian, is my boyfriend. You're someone I've just had sex with. Now get some sleep, because I might want sex again before we go back to the island. Yeah. It's the only line I remember. I mean, I quite liked like the bits in Bangkok and seeing around the place. For like a travel log, it was quite nice, really, but I suppose we could have just had Laurie for that. No. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, Should we mark think, it? Should we mark it? Yeah, I think I think we better add to before we lose the will to live. All right. So, Laurie, performances. Uh, five. Win. Six. Six for me. Effects. Wyndham. Six. That video game Two was for me. dog shit. But the, Two. the shark bite was good. Yeah, shark well, bite gets, was good. It really the shark bite was video. good. You're right. Go on, Laurie. So what are we on now? I gave that two. All right, OK. Plot, um, it gets seven from me. Laurie? Four, four from me. OK. Uh, yeah, seven. Rewatch factor, Laurie? Uh, two. Two. Two for me. Two. Yeah. Two Direction, for me. Laurie, uh, Wyndham? Six. Six for me? One. Oh, wow. You really don't <laughs> like it, do you? Cinematography. Uh, Laurie? Um, three. Okay. Oh, that is hard. I've got eight, because I think there are some beautiful shots. It looks shots nice. Yeah, you're right. It does look nice. Six for me. Uh, sound of music. Wyndham? Five. Five for me. One. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Originality. Uh, eight for me. Seven from me. Seven. Enjoyability, Seven. Laurie. <laughs> Three. 
five for me. Win. Three, three from me. I love changing past the present. It gets a six from me. Does it? It's a zero. For well, me. it was a good time. I, I remember it fondly. I remember I reading a book. Two, and what year did you fans. go, Laurie? What What year were you in Thailand? Uh, ninety nine. So, so, so we, around we'd about just this come time. back. Yeah, yeah. So we just come back from Thailand. So obviously, the, I would have seen this on DVD. I wouldn't go to the cinema see it. Um, so yeah, I was probably still fresh from it. And yeah, maybe it just hits a couple of notes that are in me because that kind of yeah, I just oh, I just really don't like it. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, crikey. Cool. All right, the scores are in there. It gets uh, fifty three from me. Forty seven from me. Come on, I will make you watch 30, 33, 33. 33, wow. 33. Giving us a movie lighthouse score of 44.3 recurring. 44.3, so that puts uh, it... In, in this year's scoreboard, it puts it above Swamp Thing, obviously, um, uh, but below v, very below V for Vendetta. And on the on the larger scoreboard, what is it? Forty-four point three. It puts it all the way down in number place number fifty-first, below Death Wish, but above In the Mouth of Madness. Ah. Oh. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Gosh, we've got some quality down there these days. Do you all remember what's the lowest, <laughs> by the way? Do you know it's at the bottom of our leaderboard? Yes. It's Return yeah, the Living yeah, Dead 2. Return yeah. the Living Dead 2. And right at the top, Jaws. Another film. Still. Where... Still? Is it still right at the top? Well, yeah. Because nobody's... Not what was the score that that got? 89. Punchy. All right, so... Obviously, um, slightly different um, these days. I'm going to have to pick the ball. Um, well, it's, it's your turn to pick anyway, James. Is it my turn to pick the, the things as well? Oh, wonderful. It is. Right. Okay. So I will, just in the spirit of fairness, I have got the ball, and the ball is... 82. 82. 82. Right. I'm actually just thinking about that. I'm just, I you can see some wire and stuff weird. up here. What? There's some, there's some wire and stuff up here. So maybe next one I could sort of fashion a random number generator and you could jiggle your sack whilst yeah, I know. run it. Okay. <laughs> oh, I think this is going to be good. It's another year. And oh. the year is, I think, a vintage year. 1984. Oh, great. Oh. Wow. Okay, okay right. right. So, I'm going to need to use my device. Yeah, so we will, um, um, we'll be back after these short messages. Um, all right, so we are back. We have chosen, I have chosen 1984, which I do think, even though I say so myself, is a wonderful year. Jesus Christ, year. I have never written down so many bangers, and I have not <laughs> got a clue which two I can all right, whittle so this down Robbie, to. All right, so off then. What's your first choice? I, I really don't... I, you're going to have to give me a minute or two. This I'll is just crazy. Wyndham, what's your first? No, hold on. No, he's going first. That's the rule. And you make sure you don't cheat. Well, I'm going first, am I? Yeah, come on. Yeah. Oh, my God. Right. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Windy bumps just vanished. <laughs> How did you do that? Right, come on. Just disappear every now and then. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, God, this is really, really hard. I'm going to say by, by Studio Ghibli, so obviously the, the makers of um, Spirited Away, uh, Howl's Moving Castle, all that stuff. There's a particular director, I can't remember his name now, and I, I wouldn't dream of saying it, so I'll get it horribly wrong. It's called Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. 
All right. It's an early studio Ghibli film and it's profoundly beautiful. It's a great film. All Nausicaa right. of the Valley of the Wind. Thank you. With them. And I'm going to go for the uh, slightly less profound, but equally brilliant. This is Spinal Tap. <laughs> I'm catering okay. for our and cult Your second segment. choice, please, Mr. Wise. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. You've got Terminator, Dune, Repo Man, The Company of Wolves, Firestarter. The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai, The Last Starfighter, Red Dawn. But I'm going to go for... Oh, there's Chud as well. <laughs> Your Chud. <laughs> Just say the bloody film. There's a really, really funny comedy. Is comedy in your ball I'm sack? I'm not going to choose either of yours if you don't hurry up. Is comedy in your ball <laughs> sack? If it is, I'm, I know what I'm going for. Go on, then. Oh, come on. Is comedy in your ball sack? Is there a comedy... Is that the film? Category. Just say oh, the bloody film. Flipping act. <laughs> okay, we're going to go for Chud. Chud. There's these weird things that live underground. It's a very, very cult. Classic, right. classic, classic. I've never seen it. Chud. Great, thanks. With them. Okay. Oh, Jesus. And I'm going to go absolute mainstream, super classic... We bagged one of its um, sequels earlier, but I'm going to go for The Terminator. Oh, oh gosh. Right. I think I want to see Chud. Yeah, I really want to see Chud. All right. We are going to go for Chud and yes! this is Final Tap. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, I think we need a bit of fun in our lives. So, uh, and I can't yeah. just after watching that other Terminator. I don't know. I can bring myself to watch the, the first one, no matter how good it is. <laughs> All right. So, and next, we will just be gushy about it next time. Um, and hopefully, we won't be so so long away. It seems as though we've got nothing else to do except watch films. So we might see you guys sooner rather than later. A bit soon. Yeah. All right, then, guys. Well, well this went back. I thought it might. Listening as ever. Um, stay safe in these unsettled times and make sure you mm. watch the Chud and this is Spinal Tap. And if you have seen them and you want to tell us what you think of them, then please write in. Or, for God's sake, give us a review on iTunes, email us at themovielighthouse at gmail.com, Facebook us at Movie Lighthouse, Twitter us at Movie Lighthouse, Instagram us at Movie Lighthouse, I imagine. At the Movie Lighthouse, yep. Yeah. Um, and we'll see you all next time, yes? Yeah. Thanks very much. Big love, people. Toot toot. Lighthouse.